Today's episode is brought to you by Tommy John and Tommy John's Cool Cotton Collection. You know, before I tell you a little bit more about Tommy John, I want you to know that I own their underwear. I own their socks and I own their undershirts. And guys, it is truly amazing. When you try their underwear, their socks or their undershirt, you will never buy another pair of underwear or another undershirt from anyone else other than Tommy John. Tommy John's Cool Cotton Collection is made from a patented blend of super light, breathable Pima cotton fabrics that keep you two to three times cooler and dry four to five times faster than traditional underwear and it's impossible to get a wedgie. Plus, Cool Cotton features the one-of-a-kind horizontal quick-draw fly, saving you an average of 217 minutes a year in bathroom time. No idea how they came up with that, but they obviously figured it out. Their undershirts, again, which I own several of, are made with a patented Stay Tucked guarantee, and their socks have a stay-up technology to keep them in place. And of course, their underwear is backed by the best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free guarantee. Look and feel amazing all year long with Cool Cotton from Tommy John. Please visit TommyJohn.com. That's TommyJohn.com. All right, folks. Well, welcome to another edition of the Alden Report. My name is Michael Alden. We are here in Blue Bay Studios. And, you know, every episode I tell myself I'm not going to say the same thing, but I'm going to say it again. I'm super excited for my next guest. My next guest, his name is Larry Lawton. He wrote the book Gangster Redemption. He's also the creator of the Reality Check program. His story is amazing. He was in prison for years. He turned his life around. And now he's he's developed a program that's out there. It's helping America's youth. It's showing them how to find their way, so to speak. He's been endorsed by congressmen. He's been endorsed by chiefs of police. He's been endorsed by senators. Uh, and, and folks, his program, again, is changing people's lives. And it's really, really amazing what he's done. He's been featured on pr- pretty much every network that's out there. I've, when I first saw Larry, I think I saw him on the Mike Huckabee show, and I said, man, this guy's amazing. I love what he's doing. And I just want to talk to him a little bit about his book, The Gangster Redemption, and also his reality check program. And, and really, kind of, I want to talk to him about the business side of it and, and what it really took to produce a book, to publish a book, to write a book, and then also to create his reality check program. Folks, if you want to learn, if you want to learn how to grow, if you want to really not learn from a guy that truly went from from nothing, being locked up for almost 10, 11 years, and then turned his life around, is now in helping people's lives. You're not going to want to miss this next half an hour. Larry, thanks for being my guest. Thanks for having me, Mike. So, uh, so Larry, you know, we talked a little bit earlier before we got started. What I'd like to do is, I, as I send uh, all my guests the same list of questions, and, and I know you didn't get them, but I think you'll be fine. Again, I've seen you on a million programs. Uh, when people do ultimately see uh, your image, because we're gonna when we when we uh, publish this, you will we'll have an image of you. They're gonna recognize you. Um, so, th- the first question I like to ask people: I mean, you you are a, you are a classic entrepreneur as well. I know you're doing a bunch of different things. We were talking about how you've shot several pilots. You're doing all these different things. I, the first question I ask people like you in, in, in the entrepreneurial sense and a business person and an author is success. How do you do, how do you as a person define what success is? Well, you know, it used to be about money, Mike, uh, let your audience know I was the biggest jewel robber in the country. I robbed 15 to 18 million dollars in diamonds. And, you know, obviously I went away to prison for four 12 year sentences and uh, now I'm out. So it was about money back then as far as the success. But now, take success. I'm now the only ex-con in the United States who's sworn in as an honorary police officer and the only ex-con who's recognized on the floor of the United States Congress. And that is how I'm rating success now. Obviously, monetarily, we all have to, to make X amount of dollars to feel good. And, and actually, it is. Money is the, uh, how do you call it, the... Uh, the, the gauge of how successful most people are. Sure. Uh, I do it with not only money, but I also do it with accomplishments like being an honorary police officer, saving lives, uh, changing somebody. When you see a kid change, there's no success I've ever had in anything. And I, I'm, and you could talk about the, the bad successes of robbing jewelry stores and walking out of a jewelry store with over a million dollars in diamonds, and you'd think the adrenaline it is, and it's an adrenaline rush. Obviously legal. Obviously, I did it all for all for the wrong reasons. Didn't hurt anyone in those stores, Mike. But it, you do. You put fear and stuff, so it's wrong. But success has to be measured by each person individually, whether it is monetarily or whether it is by my successes of changing people's lives. Your success as a a best-selling author as well, Mike, you have to feel good about knowing that whoever read your book could 
implement whatever strategies you put out there to make them successful. So that makes you successful. Not so much the money you make off your books. Right. It's you making the difference in somebody else's life. Yeah, you and I both know that selling books to, is, isn't a very lucrative business, unless you're uh, J.K. Rawlings. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the, the authors that I deal with, and they say, I said, listen to me, being an author is one thing. You're not getting an advance of a million dollars like a, 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 a pol- you know a famous political figure right. or, or somebody in the high name area. Right. That's where they don't care. They sign their deal, do their book signings, and they walk away. Obviously, very rarely will they ever see a dime of the actual revenue from the book. They get their money from the uh, advance. Right. The actual monies of the book, if people don't know. I mean, I published mine, so I own it. Right. And I have a distributing company who distributes it. It's a lot different than somebody who just publishes a book with a publishing company and gets that 15% after all expenses, which they'll never see anyway. Right, right. <laughs> Hate to say that. So, so, you, so again, you wrote this book. I have it here uh, in the studio. I'm showing you on a camera. It's called Gangster Redemption. Excuse me, Gangster Redemption. I read it. It's, uh, it, it's definitely an, an interesting story. Uh, it's, you know, there's a lot of graphic stuff in there, but and I think it, I think it needs to be in there to show people what true prison is like. It's not like the stuff you see on television. But you, you came out of prison, and then you, cre- not only did you write this book, but you created the Reality Check Program. Which which is, like you said, has been recognized by by communities all over the country and by congressmen and 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 uh, and chiefs of police and senators and judges. In fact, I, I think uh, I think one of the counties in in Florida, they when kids get in trouble, they have to go through your reality check program. Tell me a little bit about what the reality check program is and, and how you developed it. Uh, you know, great question. And it's uh, developed the program really. You know, I got out of prison. It was funny because I get out of prison, and this is 2007, and a friend comes up to me and says, Larry, I need a favor. I said, what do you want, to break somebody's legs or something? He goes, no, no, I caught my 16-year-old smoking weed, and he told him, F you, Dad, where have you ever been? When he told him that, after he said that, I said, I'll talk to your son. Once I talked to his son like that, I said to him, uh, once we talked to his son, we... uh, uh, I asked the father, I said, just let me know how it went. Just let me know what's going on. So he did. Uh, he called me up two weeks later and he said, Larry, he goes, you got to not worry about what you do with your law degree. You don't have to worry about what anything. My son changed. I said, what do you mean? He goes, he said, I don't want to go where Mr. Lawton went. So when he did that, we knew we had something good. I started getting calls from people all over the country. Right. And my county was very, very instrumental in it. And all I would do is talk to people. And they would throw me money. I said, wow, look at this. So I actually developed the program from there. I did four uh, parts of the program. It's built on my life. It's built on what prison is really like, not what you see on TV. Then the next section is what you're going to lose, your wife, your kids, uh, everything. It's not just monetarily. And then the last section of what I do is avoiding and dissolving bad associations. So that is the auspice of the reality check program which now like you said they're actually sentencing it in a few programs uh counties and we're implementing it in a few more as well yeah i mean it it, it truly is amazing like you mentioned earlier you're the only ex-con to actually have uh, to be recognized as an honorary police officer in you'd mentioned your law degree i mean the things that you've done is, is is atypical from what I think the average person would think, uh, you know, an ex-con would do with their lives. I mean, you, I mean, you, you are a bit of a, an aberration, wouldn't you say, as far as what you've done with your life post prison? Well, you know, Mike, a lot of people can do the same thing, mm-hmm. and you know, when I hear something, I'm no special, I'm no smarter than anybody. As I say on most of my radio shows or or TV shows I'm on, I'm no smarter than the kids I teach. I only have one thing they don't have, and that's experience. Right. And we all, all your listeners, have to use their experiences to the best they can. And believe it or not, experience is what people want to hear. Right. That's why, you know, I, I love talking to older people. No, they haven't been to prison. No, they haven't been strapped down naked, beaten, and tortured in a prison cell like I was by guards. And I look at that and I say, wow, the things that happened to me. But the things that happened to me made me who I am. Right. And everybody out there who listens to this has experiences, 
whether they want to write a book, whether they want to do financial stuff, whether they want to be successful in, in entrepreneurship like what you, you teach, they have an experience that they have to use to make them the best they can be. And the best part of this, Mike, is I truly love what I do. You right. hear that all the time. You got to love what you do. But even when I have a bad day, things don't go right. Something happened. Computers went down. Uh, a storm hit me in the middle of a project with the federal government because I work on those. We're doing the, a movie of my life. I signed a deal with Leo Rossi, who did analyze that. So, you know, him and I are always on the phone, and things happen. Whatever happens, Mike, when I talk to the groups of kids that I do, and I don't, and I say kids, the 20 year olds are kids to me, 22 years old, they're kids to me. Right. So they make the mistakes just like a 17 year old does. So I don't want to judge them. But my point is, once I speak to them, Mike, I feel so good about no matter what happened that day. It's like a shot of adrenaline or a drug that I've, I've never had before. I mean, I've done every drug in the book, and there's no better feeling in this world than when you see a kid come up to you and say, I had a, a case, a kid comes up to, up to me after the program and says, Mr. Law, can I talk to you? I said, yes, of course. He goes, you saved my life today. And I go, well, what do you mean? He goes, no, no, you saved my life. I was going to commit suicide today. I was going to commit suicide after this program. That's amazing. Boy, I sat down with this young man. It blew me away. I'm telling you, I feel it right now while I'm talking. I sat down with the young man, and I find out that at five years old, he watched his sister drown in the pool. He could have saved her, but he used to get beaten by his father every time he jumped that fence. So he didn't jump the fence to save his sister. He lived in with that guilt. He was 18 years old, and he saw that things happened for reasons. My life happened for a reason, being strapped down, naked, beaten, and tortured. That happened for a reason. And obviously, I don't want people to go through what I went through or that young man or anybody. But that young man now, I've heard from him three years later, and his still story makes me feel so powerful because he's doing well. He's going in the military. He, 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 and he was sentenced to me. He was court-ordered, sentenced to me, and it changed his life. So that is what you have to love your business, Mike. If you don't, you can do something, and you will get so bored with it. You will get so uh, overwhelmed with it. Then you're going to get stuck in a rut, obviously, and then before you know it, you're, you're caught in the problems you have. So for all your listeners, they have to realize they have to want it as much as they want anything else. That's why successful people have a problem. A lot of successful people have tough relationships because they put their business or they put their success or they put their entrepreneurs so front ahead of anything else. And obviously I did that when I was a gangster. Right. And I wouldn't do that now. But that's that's the key, I think. Yeah, you know, as you're talking, man, that, that first of all, that's just an amazing story. And I know you have like probably hundreds of stories very similar to that, but I just wrote down the word. Yeah, we I, have a lot. Yeah. I wrote down the word passion. And you can just tell from the way you're speaking that you're just you're, you're 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 passionate about that, and that's for me, and I hear it from others as well. That's one of the keys, like you mentioned, to success in whatever you're doing. Right? It's just to have passion. You know, like if you don't have passion for whatever, you don't even want to get up and get to work. People ask me, Larry, you work a lot. I said, No, I don't. And they go, What do you mean? I go, I don't consider it work. Yes, you're going to get an email from me at 9 or 10. or I mean, I get up at 2 in the morning sometimes. I travel so much, Mike, that I know the roads. I live in South Florida and Central Florida, two places. And when I travel from one to the other, I'll leave at 3 in the morning. And people, you go for 3, you're, you're down, it takes you two and a half hours. Yes, I'm down at 5.30, maybe go to bed for an hour, but I'm so energized because of the thinking in the car right. that I did on what I'm doing, where I'm going, you know, how many connections I made, what happened during that whole last week or that event that I was at that I just went to or spoke at. And that is it. That passion makes it not work. People ask me how much work this is. If you love something so much, is it really work? The work is something you do to make a living, to go home and pay bills and go home to see it. I, I do what I do because this is what I do. Right. Obviously, if I, you know, people say, well, what would you do if you hit the lottery? I says, not much different. I mean, I might have a little bit more time, a little bit more stuff to do with people with, with finances and, and probably be more comfortable, maybe cut back on speaking gigs or what I do. Right. But I'm not going to change that much in my life. 
You know, and that's the difference, I think, what people want. They hit the lottery, I'm quitting work, I'm doing this, I'm, you know, if, and I get work. Trust me, I get work very much. But the guys who listen to your podcast and the guys who listen to you or read your stuff are people who want to be entrepreneurs, people who want to be successful in whatever they're going to do. And those are the people that have to have passion, as you would say, and a drive that is, I, I don't even know where it comes from. And, I, and you know, I'm not young anymore. I'm, like, I'm going to be 55 years old. And people say, man, how do you do it? You, you, you look good. You, you're, you're. I said, listen, I have such a good schedule getting up when I do some exercise and, and I get my mind correct and I do golf and I do stuff that I, you know, do love. So that keeps me kind of young with my friends. Right. And I love what I do. So that's it. Passion. Yeah, it, it it makes it makes a lot of sense. I, the one of the uh, next next questions, uh, if by the way you've already answered some of the stuff, I'm going to skip over some questions. But uh, in your business life, I mean, the obstacles that you that you overcame, you know, post prison, during prison, and in and everything in between are just amazing. The fact that you're even still here is just remarkable. But um, in, in business, what has been your biggest professional obstacle, and how did you overcome it? I think you always keep going. Obviously, finances is everybody's probably Achilles heel. Sure. They would like more money to do something with. Uh, I've learned to do so much more with so much less. Yeah. Let me tell you what is obstacle. One of the best obstacles I had was not getting funding at a certain point. One, because it kept ownership of everything I do to me. And two, I had to learn things that you'd say, how does he know that? Whether it's a Vimeo and uploading videos or doing certain things with my website, doing certain things with, you know, stuff of that nature. So all your, you know, your listeners have to realize it's not going to be one thing. I, I can't say it was just the one thing. I could say that it, it's making me learn more of everything I do, whether it's QuickBooks to how to work with a publisher, or as we discussed before the show, how to work with TV people and, and what that industry is about. I love to learn, Mike, and right. so do you. I know that. So your listeners, I'm sure, if they're entrepreneurs, they have to be wanting to learn. And once you have it, whatever that one obstacle, it's not going to ever be one obstacle because you're going to run into an obstacle and you're going to find another one, whether it's hiring the right people, whether it's finances, whether it's government contracts, where do you want to go? Is it state? Is it political? How you have to play that game if you're in that, that kind of field? And I'm finding out most fields have a political edge to them. Right. Whether it's my stuff getting into schools and systems and courthouses and, and what judge is elected and what's not and uh, what person that you have to discuss. I have a big meeting tomorrow with a, uh, a big state attorney and, and people from a whole county in South Florida. It's huge, millions of people. So I mean, I'm going to be discussing our program to be court ordered in that county. And that, let me tell you, that county is 50,000 cases a year. Wow. So, I mean, it's, you know, there's going to be obstacles. There's political obstacles. And you know what I got to give your audience and I have to really, really take this. Never, you never know when your contact's going to work. And let me tell you what I mean by that. I met a man over two and a half years ago who was a, police officer on a extra duty, like, not, uh, you know, like a, where they work a, a bar or they work somewhere. Sure. Not ex, as a cop. They right. Call them, they, you know, might talk a lot to whatever they do. Right. So I met a guy who was working at a sugar company that I was going to do business with, and they ended up going up. But this guy worked for them as well. And he heard what I did. He goes, I want to buy your book. Uh, I ended up having a book. I used my books for more for promotions. Uh, they're in my trunk. So I said, here's a book. Here, you can have my book. It's in Barnes & Noble or whatever, but here's the book. So I signed the book to him. Two years later, Mike, this man is now the head of the union for the Miami-Dade School System Police. The head of the whole union. That's awesome. He calls me up the other day and says, Larry, he goes, uh, you know, we always stay in contact. What do you do? Can we have a meeting? I said, obviously, sure. So I drive down to Miami, we have a meeting for an hour and a half, and he goes, I want this not only in the police department, Miami-Dade County is the fourth largest school district in the country with a $4.5 billion budget. So he says to me, I want you in our school system, and I want to bring you to 
uh, an event and I want to bring you new stuff, I'll speak at this event, and it's with all the players from Miami. So that's just some, uh, I, I tell a person, you never know where your contact, don't get down when a contact doesn't work because it might come back two years later. Always stay positive, never be negative somebody, never, uh, obviously, I don't like certain things people do. You read my stuff, Mike, and I am very vocal about rehabilitation. I'm very ro- vocal about bad prison systems. And if people are running those systems, they can either not like what I say or say, wow, he's got a point, let's discuss it. Right. So I stick to my convictions. You never know when you're going to meet the right man in your business. And before you know it, that man you know, could change your whole business outlook. I go from projecting X amount to projecting X amount of millions. So you, you can look at life in that regard and say, this, okay, when is it going to come? So you got to hang tough, too. Right. And that's what I tell people. The longer you're in business, people see that. And they see you're not in and out. They see, oh, wow, this guy is successful, or this guy has a way to survive. And survival is part of it. Yeah, that makes a sense. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. In a second, I want to ask you a question about about education, folks. We, we've been on with Larry Lawton. Uh, he's the author of the, of the book Gangster Redemption. He's also uh, the creator of the program called the Reality Check Program, a program that's really been changing kids' lives for years. He's saving kids' lives. It's something that has been endorsed by government officials, by local officials, by congressmen. Larry Lawton's story is amazing. He was in prison for years. He came out. He turned his life around, and now he's helping other people. He's doing all sorts of things. He's got TV pilots going on about his life. His life, by the way, uh, is amazing. Again, it's in the book Gangster Redemption right here uh, that I'm showing you. And his reality check program is also awesome. So if you want some more information about Larry Lawton, you go to LarryLawton.com. You can also find him on Twitter. I believe he's on Instagram. And also, if you want some more information about the reality check program, uh, I believe you can go to Reality Check Program. Dot com. Larry, uh, you know, briefly, uh, we mentioned you, you, you subtly kind of went over it, but we, you mentioned your law degree. Uh, one of the questions I have for you in, in business um, is traditional higher education important for success post high school? You know, it's a funny question because I have the credits to be a lawyer, right. all the credits, but I can't be a lawyer because I'm a convicted felon. Right. Uh, yes. I am a certified paralegal. I got all the way there. I mean, I just can't take the bar. I have the credits. Do I think I did the education in the field that I love? You know, when I see young people going to school and you ask them what they're taking in school and it's a waste of time, I hate to say it, a lot of psychology degrees are, are what are you going to do with that? <laughs> Unless that's your passion or that's your field. Higher education, I think work ethic and experience you can take some of the richest men in the world. They quit college. Bill Gates quit college. Mark Zuckerberg quit college. Steve Jobs quit college. Sam Walton never went to college. Right. Uh, you're talking about the richest men in the world. So do I think it's necessary? No. Do I think today's world is good? Obviously. Depending on what you want to do. But as an entrepreneur, your work ethic and your drive and passion is more important obviously than having a degree in whatever obviously a degree in let's just say business or marketing or finance if that's the field you're in it can't hurt you right i only got my degree because i was doing the law work for so long i was in the law library for 10 years so i was lucky to have people on the on the outside who sponsored and paid for my college course to come into the prison so they had to pay for that right so we paid for that and that's how i got that but it's, it, it, I wouldn't say that is the why I got, uh, obviously, successful. I just think that what happens is, you know, I don't want to be a lawyer. That's for sure. Let me get you a thing. I pay enough of them, Mike. Those lawyers, the, they get you in uh, trouble. I don't, I just, yeah, they sure can. You know, there's so many of them, <laughs> and there's such a different field. I, of course, help people. I testify at trials. I'm, I'm working on a case now, you know, since the Supreme Court passed a ruling that uh, all young people that sent to life sentence have to be resentenced. Right. Because it's unconstitutional to give them a life sentence without extenuating circumstances and stuff. Obviously, the human young brain doesn't develop until it's 25. Right. So what I do is I do, you know, speak at, at uh, uh, trials, and I testify at trials on rehabilitation and that kind of stuff. 
So obviously to have a credentials of what I do, it right. means something. But my credentials are more my past sure. or my experiences, like yours, Mike. Uh, your experience is what makes you successful. Right. You knowing all the stuff you know about entrepreneurship, all you know about marketing your company, all you know about direct sales and all the stuff you've done in your life, that's experience is what made it. Right. Your law degree didn't get you that. Your no, no, you're right. Got you that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's uh you know, everything you're saying it, for me is, is, is I, I, you know, I enjoyed the process of going to law school. I enjoyed the, 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 the mental uh, gymnastics we had to go through. And when I think about it now, I didn't necessarily enjoy being yelled at by, uh, by a professor in front of 150 other students and, and, and just being embarrassed. But it, it was just the process that you go through. And, and uh, I, I loved that part, the learning part. You talked about learning earlier, just constantly trying to learn stuff. And, uh, and for me, that that's really what it was. And then, you know, becoming a lawyer was just a goal of mine and, and you know but you're right it doesn't I was telling someone this earlier but you do it every day right yeah. Mike you do it every day right we I'm a I'm a greed junkie to this day right whether it's I'm reading those on the internet I'm reading somewhere on my Twitter I'm reading something and I love to learn we absorb I think personally when we die is when we stop learning yeah. when we think we know it all we're the real idiots True. you know when I sit down with people I tell anybody we can discuss politics we can discuss finances, we can discuss business, we can discuss uh, religion. If you can change my mind, I'm open to that. I love debating. I love researching and then debating whether whatever topic it is. And obviously right now it's political. But I love researching and doing stuff and then saying, okay, this is what we can do. Sure. And change my mind. I love you have to be able, and you can, all your entrepreneurs listening have to realize you can change your mind and you should be allowed to change your mind. I'm not talking about your core values and whatever they might be. Right. I'm talking about change your mind because if you're not flexible in business, you're done. Yeah. You're done. And you know that as well. Yeah, that, that so. makes a lot of sense. Larry, you know, again, you, 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 you're an author, uh, you're a lecturer, uh, you know, you, you said you're an expert witness. Uh, yeah. in, 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 in a way, sometimes I think you can be an entertainer because the way you tell the stories is really, really awesome. Uh, you, you've been amazing for spending a little bit of time. I know you're busy. I you, think you, you said this is your like your third interview this week. Uh, I want to ask you kind of one last question. Um, can you give uh, our viewers and, and listeners – uh, a secret business strategy or technique that you use in order to be efficient. And the reason why I ask that question is because I know uh, know you uh, personally, and I also know as an entrepreneur you're doing a million things. Like you said, you're traveling all over the place. How, how do you keep it all together, and how do you become? How do you maintain your efficiency with doing all this stuff? That's the hardest part. It's a great question. How do you do it? And as a small business owner, it's so hard. I obviously have a calendar. And right. no matter what I have is on my calendar. If right. I did not put this interview on my calendar, I wouldn't be here. Right. I don't have, I have a very good recollection brain, obviously from back in the day. And like you said, can, can you remember and tell stories and, 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 and tell them in somewhat detail. And I'm pretty good about that. So what I try to do is I always have a board of my priorities. Now your priorities will change. They should change, but your goal should be always that whatever that one goal is. How you get to that goal is another thing. I had to change up from a subscription model format to what I do with law enforcement and do with big corporations now, which is my video cards. And the video cards are going very well. We're changing police departments. We're changing the, the way people look at police. Which we're doing a whole bunch of stuff even with the government. So I had to change that model and had to see to change that model. So when you say, is, what's the, the, there's not, again, there's not, you have to have constructive a way of running your business. I'm sure you have your people, you have your priorities. You have whatever the priority is at that time. Now mine, I have three or four always in the hopper, whether it's the movie Right. whether it's with TV shows, whether it's with the reality check program, into court systems. And my other one is the reality check program, which is connecting police and communities. So those are the two, the, the, the getting into court systems and getting into schools, court systems, and uh, connecting the police with the community. I have to keep everything the same. That is my goal. Those are my goals. How do I get to those goals? 
Now, every day is different. I have, whether it's an interview here, whether it's an interview for CNN, or an interview for MSNBC or Fox. I mean, I, I do all those interviews, and I do radio shows up and down the East Coast, a lot in Connecticut, up in the Northeast, actually. There's two shows in Connecticut I do every month. So, and they did good radio shows because they're heard because I hear people, oh, I heard you, I was in New York and we got that show. Right. So, but they're, they're used, Mike, obviously, as you know, as a marketing tool to let people know what I do, how we do it, and who knows who's listening or who knows who listens to your podcast. Right. It could be a police chief that says, wait, I need this in my department. Right. And hopefully they call us. And obviously, so everything we do has to have that goal. And I, if there's one thing, one thing I tell any entrepreneur is have a calendar. Because if you're a person who's on the go and going places, you are going to need a calendar. Yeah. And I don't care what CEO it is yourself, you can't live without your calendar. I can guarantee you. It's very easy. It's on our phones. And I look at my phone every morning. I say, okay, I got these three things to do. If I don't see anything there, I have enough things to do. And believe it or not, something pops up and you put it on the calendar right away. And if it's not on that calendar, I say, I got to put, somebody said to me, Larry, we had this, I said, no, 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 you, did we put it on the calendar? I said, no, I said, wait, but I, you said it might be. As if you told me that it's not on the calendar, it's not on the calendar. I just can't do it. I, <laughs> I, I have to have that function of a calendar. Now, obviously, I calendar myself two days off or whatever I do. Right. You know, I even calendar my golf. I even calendar my golf. Sure. And when you come to South Florida, Mike, I'm going to take you golf. Well, so, I'd love that. And, you know, yeah, and, and you'll enjoy the club in here. And I'm actually, you know, we do that now. We do that so it's in the calendar. Everything's going to be in the calendar. That's your one thing. I'm sure you use it too, Mike. Well, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I tell people all the time, I'm a very simple guy. You and I have had, you know, numerous conversations about stuff. You know, we're both kind of simple guys, but we figured things out and we're continuing to figure things out. And we're using the basic tools that we all have and it's free. Like like you said, a calendar. I mean, if you don't, if you don't, if you can't afford to go buy one at a store, you can draw one on a piece of paper and just create a calendar. But like you said, our devices, our phones and things like this now are so in tune to, to our lifestyles that a calendar, it's Sounds so basic and simple, but it's it's easy and, it, and it's important. And you know, and it's great that you that you mentioned that too, because you know, again, I've known Larry for a few years, and and I tried to get him on the podcast, I think a couple of weeks ago, and he says, you know, he looked, at, I think you actually said he looked at his calendar. He said, I can't do it until this date and at this exact. Time. In fact, we pushed this a half an hour. I was nervous that I was going to bump him up, uh, bump him off off his calendar. But you're right, it's simple stuff, and, and I appreciate yeah. appreciate that yeah. advice. You know, Mike, it's very important. I, I'm a business owner, and this is something for your business people. If I say I'm going to be somewhere, I am there, and I'm early. Right. If I have, a, I have a business meeting tomorrow at 2 p.m., up about an hour away from where I'm at, and I will leave an hour and 45 minutes early in case there's traffic and be there 20, 30 minutes early. And you know what? I'll get on my phone. I can do things there. I'm very, very punctual, and when I meet anybody, if they're not punctual, that puts a negative vibe in me right off the bat. Being punctual is one of the number one things in business. Because once you're not punctual or you don't do what you say you're going to do, you're kind of telling somebody, eh, your time is not as important as my time. Right. Uh, you'll do it at my level. And I don't, get, I don't care who you are, and I don't care. You know, I, I deal with a lot of TV. And I go on TV, and these TV shows are all punctual. When you're on at the 4:20, you know I'm there, I'm waiting, boom, I'm in my chair, all mic'd up. It's been tested. 4:20, they go, they go. They might push it a minute or two because the story or something. But I mean, you learn how big corporations and big entities run such a smooth operation. What a TV show is not a smooth operation. Right. You have guests and you have people that, that mess up and they don't show. That's why the first thing I tell people: if you want to be on TV. The minute you don't show up, the minute you're late, the minute you're not with something, they're never going to use you again. Because right. that producer has to know you are ready, you are there, and you're reliable. So I tell everybody, be reliable, be there. I told you I'm going to be on the show, Mike. I'm on your show. That I, I would not do that. I have a phone. God forbid something happened, you would have had plenty of notice to figure it out. And, and that's why I think you know it's important to have a calendar because being punctual shows everybody in the world that you're here for business and you're, you're serious. 
Well, you know, it makes a lot of sense. You're kind of making me feel bad because we we did we did push the interview a half an hour, but we gave I think I gave you a little bit advance, and, oh, and, <laughs> and then I did call five minutes early. I called five minutes early too, which was good. <laughs> <laughs> no, my that's exactly what you suppose. You gave me notice, right? Right. You, uh, things happen, right. obviously. That's the, now. If you never showed, if you right. never said a word, right. and didn't call, I wouldn't have answered. Because I said, oh, right. well, "Darn, I would have gave it ten minutes." Right. And things happen, right. and I would have said, "Okay, forget it." And right. it, I'm a person. Obviously, you called. You, you right. your your assistant said, "You know, we're running this way." Right. And, and actually, I think you did it yesterday or the day before. Yeah, we did. We usually so we, we did gave you, enough yeah. time <laughs> for anybody. And and once you do that, obviously things happen. You could be late. You could still be late with stuff happening. Plane, especially with planes and Delta. Right. Anything happen <laughs> oh, when you travel? Yeah. So as long as you talk and call and you do things. Communications is obviously the number one thing in business, right. in any business. Sales, obviously, you have to be able to sell yourself, you sell your product, sell stuff. But people will only do those things. They'll only work with you if you can communicate with them and if you're on time and punctual. Because the minute I, if I'm in a sales meeting and, and I'm the one pulling the strings, so to speak, and somebody's late, they lose me right out the door, right out the door. And it's just, you have that negative, then you're going to look for things. And unless there's a, a hell of an excuse that you weren't there, and I don't have a met one where you can't call and say, listen, there was a major accident. I helped this lady get to the hospital because she was in a, hey, come on, well, you want to reschedule or we'll do it later? Obviously, we're going to work with you. But when you just say, oh, well, you know, I didn't show up because, you know, I, got, I was on another phone call. Right. Well, like, obviously, my, my business wasn't as important as that phone call. You could have done something or rescheduled or made something happen or tell him, hey, I'll call you back. So unless it's the president of the United States, you should be able to do that. Larry, Larry, I want, I want to thank you. I, I want to, I want to thank you so much for your time because you you know you're a busy guy. Obviously, you're doing a lot of great things. Like we said, you're an author, you're a lecturer, you're 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 an expert witness. You you know you know you're doing you know you're in the movies, you're in the TV business, you're doing all these different things. And the advice you gave is really uh, it's sound advice. And so for those of you that are listening, for those of you that are watching, excuse me, the, the, those those of you that are listening and those of you that are watching, um, you know, take uh, notice of what Larry said. This is really kind of simple, basic. stuff. Stuff, but it makes sense. Like, be punctual. Communication is key. Do what you say you're going to do. I say that a lot to people as well. These are things that they're fundamental principles that every successful person applies in their day to day life, and, and anybody can do it. So, again, Larry, I want to thank you for your time. If you if you like some more information about Larry Lawton, you can go to LarryLawton.com. He wrote the book Gangster Redemption. It's it's available everywhere. And also, Larry had mentioned as well. If you are in the law enforcement world and you want to learn about the the Larry Lawton program, the Reality Check program that has been endorsed by congressmen, by judges, federal judges. Uh, it's been endorsed um, by by uh, senators as well, folks. You can just go to uh, the reality. Excuse me, realitycheckprogram.com. Again, it's realitycheckprogram.com, and I'm sure Larry would love to talk to you a little bit about it and, and what his program is doing for people. It's it's really amazing what he's doing, and it's also unique. There's not a lot of stuff out there like Larry's program and his background. I mean, you can't you can't duplicate what his background is, is because it's 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 his own experience, and he's changing people's lives. Larry, again, I want to thank you for being my guest. My name is Michael Alden, and this has been another edition of the Alden Report. Today's episode is brought to you by Tommy John and Tommy John's Cool Cotton Collection. You know, before I tell you a little bit more about Tommy John, I want you to know that I own their underwear. I own their socks and I own their undershirts. And guys, it is truly amazing. When you try their underwear, their socks or their undershirt, you will never buy another pair of underwear or another undershirt from anyone else other than Tommy John. Tommy John's Cool Cotton Collection is made from a patented blend of super light, breathable Pima cotton fabrics that keep you two to three times cooler and dry four to five times faster than traditional underwear and it's impossible to get a wedgie. Plus, Cool Cotton features the one-of-a-kind horizontal quick-draw fly, saving you an average of 217 minutes a year in bathroom time. No idea how they came up with that, but they obviously figured it out. Their undershirts, again, which I own several of, are made with a patented Stay Tucked Guarantee, and their socks have a stay-up technology to keep them in place. And of course, their underwear is backed by the best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free guarantee. Look and feel amazing all year long with Cool Cotton from Tommy John. Please visit TommyJohn.com. That's TommyJohn.com.